Hi, and welcome to the Commission's Environmental Information Management System, or EAMS, demonstration. Today we'll be working with the EAMS tool to access oil and gas specific planning and operational guidance for a number of wildlife species. We'll also be using EAMS to access planning and operational measures and ABA guidance for wildlife habitat areas and ungulate winter range. First, we'll start with the, on the BC OGC website. From here, we'll access the online services, scroll down, and you'll see EAMS. It's marked by an ungulate hoof. We click here, and this takes us directly to the EAMS homepage. EAMS is an internal and external facing online information portal housing detailed oil and gas planning and operational measures for a selection of wildlife species and for all wildlife habitat area and ungulate winter range in northeast BC. The wildlife planning and operational measures housed in EAMS are a summary of subject matter expertise, available existing wildlife guidance including the EPMR, EPMG, species accounts, general wildlife measures and the wildlife compendium. In EAMS, there are a number of different search methods. As you can see, you can search by browsing our UWR, our WHA. So there's quite a number of those. You can scroll through, or by species. Also, if you have the correct spelling on hand, you can do a species search. We're going to pick our scroll down bar and start with bull trout. In bull trout, you can see it takes us to information about bull trout key habitat features, the objectives of these bull, of bull trout habitat. It links us to CDC species information and the species account. And let's click on this so you can see it takes you directly to the bull trout species account. This is where we've sourced some of the information we use to develop our bull trout guidance. I'm going to go back to EMS. And you can see down below we have our planning and operational measures. Obviously the planning measures are the measures we should be incorporating in the planning phase. So things like avoiding, minimizing activities to avoid in these areas and measures you can take to minimize impacts up front. Operational measures occur in the operational phase. These are things like timing windows and specific mitigations you can take to minimize impacts. In this case with bull, tra with bull trout, it's important to avoid the critical life stages spawning <laughs> August 15th to October 31st. We would like you to work outside that window. Also restore disturbed areas to natural pre-development ecosystem as soon as possible following development. Where stream crossings at Bull Trout Habitat are necessary, rehabilitate to a properly functioning condition. Necessary crossings should be built to the highest standards to minimize the risks of sedimentation input or impacts to the channel. Okay, so from bull trout, I'm going to move on to a mammal. So we can go back to our species, we can scroll through, and we'll look at boreal caribou. Boreal caribou is a really good example because you can see here we have some specific guidance. Note, applicants proposing works within boreal caribou areas will continue to refer to the guidance when the, within the IOPs. And we'll click on the IOPs, I'm sure you're all very familiar with these. But this guidance still applies and the expectation is you'll follow this directly and you'll use the EAMS guidance to support your application. In EAMS you can see for boreal caribou we also have key habitat features, objectives of boreal, habit, boreal caribou habitat, we also have links to boreal caribou ungulate winter range and boreal caribou wildlife habitat areas all in BC so you can see there's a significant number of WHAs with boreal caribou as the primary species. We also have links, just like in bull trout, to our source data. This is a link here to the Compendium for Wildlife Guidelines for Industrial Development Projects in the North Area of British Columbia. Also we have some, obviously, links to the IOPs and links to North Region Wildlife and North Region Least Risk Windows. This is all valuable information and EAMS brings it all, harmonizes it together in one location. From here, I'd like to take you to look at some WHAs and UWRs. You can look at the WHAs. Here I'm going to type in a number. I think we'll look at 9-122. This is a WHA for Black-Throated Green Warbler. 
here you can see you can link back to your species information here if you click on this it takes you to the planning and operational measures for species for black-throated green warbler here I can click on this and we can get the OGA order this opens up the order under which this area was protected and gives some guidance from the Deputy Minister of Forest Lands and Natural Resource Operations Going back here, we can see there are several other WHAs for black-throated green warbler, quite a lot in BC. And we can also see key management objectives for WHA habitat for warblers. And down below, we can see ABA guidance for WHAs in enhanced management and for ABA guidance for regulatory policy. This ABA guidance has been developed from the order as well as from the other background information provided. In order to understand the status of our ABA areas, we need to click on ABA. We now can scroll down to our new ABA status reports and search by the basin that this WHA is located in. Under wildlife, and we can see nine Dash 122 WHA black throated green warbler, 87 hectares, and it is in Technus 90.4%, which puts it in regulatory policy. So going back to our EMS page, we can look down and we see ABA guidance for regulatory policy. So this guidance is specific to this WHA. And it's asking for avoidance as our first choice, where avoidance is not possible because this is a sensitive area, sensitive to edge, it's an edge sensitive species, it's sensitive to fragmentation and noise, and it cu currently already has quite a large amount of disturbance in the area. We know, we can see now that all the planning and operational measures for black throated green warbler, and we can get those by clicking on our primary species information, apply and that this application will require a mandatory internal BC Oil and Gas Commission stewardship review. This process will automatically be triggered when an application in regulatory policy area is submitted in AMS. It, it, will, be, it will send a message over to the stewardship group and they will be required to have a review of this. This application also requires that applicants submit a full mitigation strategy. Guidelines for the Preparation and contents of mitigation strategies can be found in the revised appendix of, of the EPMG. I believe it's revised appendix B of the EPMG. Going back, we can have a quick look at planning and operational measures that all apply. And you can see avoidance first within the habitat when you need to have an activity occur in this area. You need to employ a QP to identify nests and singing pairs. That's when you're working within the nesting window. Um, you also need to try to find areas where you're not fragmenting, fragmenting mature forest. You also need to avoid working within the nesting period, which is between May 1st and July 31st. If that's not possible, there's going to be a 500 meter buffer from occupied nests and a 100 meter from unoccupied nests. I'm going to go back. Now I'm going to give you another example. We're going to look at some UWRs. Here, the UWR I'm going to show you is 9-002 SPC-009. You can see the primary species here is northern caribou. We can click here or here to go back to directly to our primary species information. We can click here to see our OGA order. Again, here it is. We can go back to our guidelines. You can see the key man management objectives for this UWR are obviously to limit roads, limit impacts to forest cover, maintain large roadless, unfragmented forest areas associated with boreal caribou and terrestrial lichen. This particular UWR I've chosen because it actually is an exception to our standard guidance. Although it is not the first choice for oil and gas activities because it is an ungulate winter range. This ungulate winter, winter range was actually developed with the intent that it could, it could incorporate a certain amount of oil and gas and other industry activities. So it's, it's what we call an exception. Even though this particular ungulate winter range 
is in regulatory policy and normally would require a mitigation strategy and stewardship review. It is in consideration of the content of the general wildlife measures, so the content of the order telling us what the purpose of this ungulate winter range is. We understand that we're allowed to have some activity and development in this area and it will not be managed as a regulatory policy application. Instead, it's managed as a routine application so that no mitigation strategy or stewardship review is required. The intent is for you to simply meet the planning and operational measures and key management objectives for this ungulate winter range and specific to northern caribou. We can click on those and have a quick look before we shut this down. As you can see, we have some specific planning and operational measures depending for all activities, some specific planning and operational measures for roads, seismic, and you can see there's some specific operational measures for pipelines as well. So that wraps up the EAMS demo. Thank you very much for listening. If you have any questions, please e email me at nicole.curnow, C-U-R-N-O-W, at bcogc.ca. Have a good day. Thanks.